Hello everyone, welcome to our Dental Talk Without Secrets and today we're going to be talking about how to restore, again, one dark central but now with ceramic veneer, okay, with indirect restoration. Okay, so this is the case. This case here, the patient has one dark tooth, okay, and in this case, this tooth is vital. It has a condition which is called calcific calcific yeah that's it uh pulp metamorphosis okay so it's a vital tooth it doesn't have uh endodontic treatment and it doesn't need endodontic treatment okay so it's a vital tooth but as you can see here both centrals are exactly at same level so i can't put anything on top of that tooth without preparing it okay and here there is a challenge because I need space so that the lab can make the veneer, but also the more I prepare the tooth, the darker it will appear because the dentin is where the color is, okay? The color of the tooth is within the dentin, okay? If I remove enamel, the dentin will show through even more. So the more I prepare, the darker the tooth will appear. Usually in a case like this, where you have, where you have this condition, a vital tooth like this, we do a bleaching tray and we bleach only that tooth. And we did that. And we got a little bit of better result. The tooth was darker than now, okay? But still, the patient wanted to do a veneer on top of that tooth. She wasn't happy about it. She's a dentist and she wanted to do a ceramic veneer. So let's let's see how we approach it this case so uh first thing that we need are pictures pictures to the lab okay good pictures to the lab pictures with a shade guide so that the the technician can see what he has to reproduce okay also something that i find very useful is to take a picture with a a polarized filter like this one here where all the scattering light will be removed and then you have a more plain view of the details of the tooth that you want to copy okay which is the other central so this is what we have and now we're going to start our preparation okay this is a depth cutter of 0.3 millimeter deep okay so we're going to make grooves on the surface of that tooth Okay, like you see here, and we're going to make those grooves in three different planes. Okay, we're going to do one plane uh, accordingly to the to the cervical area, and then another plane accordingly to the middle of the tooth, and then another one at the incisal area. So three different planes. Okay, and then we're going to mark down the bottom of those grooves, and then with a long uh, diamond burr, we're going to prepare our tooth until all those marks disappear. Okay, as I said, those depth, the depth for that preparation is 0.3, but once I prepare everything, probably I'll get to 0.6 or even 0.7, which is fine. Okay, then you can tell me why didn't you use a 0.5 depth cutter? which is, you know, deeper because, for two reasons, because I don't want to get too deep, at least not at the first attempt. OK, there is a paper from from Marcelo Calamita and Christian Coachman where they make a correlation of how much brighter you need a tooth to how much preparation is needed to achieve that goal. So, for example, for each degree of, of uh, a lighter shade, that you need, you need 0.3 millimeter. So if you're going from A2 to A1, you need 0.3 millimeter. If you're going to A2 to a B1 or for a bleached tooth, not too bright, but then you would need 0.6, okay? Something around that. So we figured that here we would need around 0.6 to 0.7. So I started with my depth cut with 0.3 millimeters, okay? That's what I did here. I also place it a metal a metal strip okay a metal matrix actually a simple metal matrix to prevent my burr from touching the neighboring teeth okay so this is the preparation okay i'm doing my preparation through the microscope everything you see here is being recorded through recorded through the microscope okay i also have one 
one uh, retraction cord at the gingival level, okay, inside the sulcus. It's a 3-0 ultra pack from UltraDent, okay, and I'm doing my preparation very close to the gingival level. I don't need to put that inside the sulcus because the gingiva is already retracted. If I come very close to that, and you can see I'm using a very small burr, I'm going to do a very small chamfer around the whole preparation. And as I get close to the gingiva, that's good enough because when I remove the cord, the gingiva will be at the level of the prep, okay? And also, I'm going to take my prep uh, interproximally, as you can see here, okay? Because I don't want something like this here, okay? I don't want that from a side view. I will, uh, I'm able to see the, the, the limit between my restoration and the substrate and the tooth, okay? I don't want to see the interface between the, the tooth and the restoration, okay? So I have to prepare close to the uh, contact point, as you can see there, okay? So it's a, a very fine, now I'm using a fine burr, okay? Fine grid, fine burr uh, to finish my preparation, to finish my chamfer, as you can see that. I'm doing the incisor reduction here, okay? And as I'm getting close to the other central, I will place my metal matrix again. And then with the diamond disc, I will remove that little bit of enamel that still remains over there. And then after that, with the finishing disc, I will remove all the sharp angles from my preparation. Okay. And then I will smooth it out everything a little bit, as you can see at my finishing line at my chamfer i can use a multi-blade like this one here just to smooth it out a little bit okay then after that i can use again the finishing disc and some rubber points and then i finish my preparation okay i finish my preparation i know there is a, a great deal of destruction to the, to the structure but you know you can't help it that's how we do it Maybe if we were, we were going to do it on uh, composite, maybe we, we wouldn't need to do the incisor reduction. Certainly, we wouldn't need the incisor reduction and we could preserve a little bit more. But nevertheless, let's see how we go on with this case here. Okay, this is the preparation. You can see that only one small spot of dentin was uh, exposed. Just a small, small amount of dentin. That's very good because Almost the whole preparation is on enamel, and that's better for adhesion, okay? So here is, a, is the image with the polarized filter. And now I take the impression, okay? And then I'll do a provisional restoration. Usually for one tooth, I do a direct freehand bonding uh, composite, okay? Just do a direct bonding, just do a, a, a spot uh, conditioning, just a small, a, a little bit of acid edge in the middle of the, the crown right here a little bit of acid here I wash it and then I use a, a bonding agent okay not a universal bonding agent okay uh, not a self etching bonding agent no a regular bonding agent on top of that and then I'll do my restoration usually it holds well until the next appointment then on next appointment this is the first trial that we're having from the first veneer that technician made, it didn't look good to me, okay? It didn't look good to me. Here's on the uh, polarized filter picture, okay? We need different trying pastes, especially with different opacities. We don't need different colors. We need different opacities. We need very opaque, medium opaque, okay? But we need the trying paste so that we can check if how the result is so we could have cemented this but the patient wasn't happy and i wasn't happy either okay the incisal edge was with a too low value to gray didn't match well and this is a feldspatic veneer because we find that if the technician uh, has the proper skill to use to, to build a feldspatic veneer i think we have a better result in one dark tooth case okay with the feldspatic so here it didn't work out 
I have to send everything back to the lab so that the technician would make me a new veneer. But as I, this veneer here can't be fixed or anything, I use that as a provisional, okay? I, again, I only did a small spot of acid etch and then, then I get the proper cement and I got an opaque cement just to see how it would look and then I cemented it. But just with a little bit of acid, a little spot of acid in the middle of the tooth, that's it. And I have to remember after removing that before doing my cementation, I have to, to, uh, to go with the disc on that surface where I did the spot edge so that I can remove the composite from that surface, okay? So this is the first trial cemented as a provisional. Look how dark it, uh, it showed, okay? Not a very good restoration. So if I had cemented it, that would be the result. And of course, the patient wouldn't be happy because the tooth is still dark and I would have to remove the everything, remove the, the veneer, remove the ceramic, which is not easy. Even with the uh, Erbian laser, it's not easy. Then after removing all that, I'll need a new impression, new provisional, everything. And of course, pay for another veneer to the lab. Okay, so this is the second one. The second one looks a lot nicer, a lot nicer, a lot nicer. So again, I needed to use a very opacious uh, trying paste, okay, to see that the result now is much better. I don't think we can get a much better result than this one here. It's never exactly perfect, but it's very close and the patient was happy about it. So now we're going to do our cementation. We're going to place the rubber dam. I place it also a B4 clamp, B4 clamp from Hygienic. And now I'm going to see if my, if see the, the spot of the, look here, the spot of dentin showing here, you see? Everything is on enamel, but here we have a spot of dentin. So I'm going to check the fit of my veneer. It's perfect. It's very good. Very good. Okay. So now I'm going to do the acid edge. Okay. Of course, once again, I'm going to place the matrix, the metal matrix around the tooth. Okay. To, to prevent the adhesion to the neighboring teeth. So I'm doing the acid edge, wash it, uh, wash it, dry, apply the adhesive, evaporate the solvent. And now you can see that I'm placing my veneer with a very opacious, very opacious cement. That's a very link from Ivoclar, okay? Opaque, very link, as you can see there. This yellow hue that you have here is the filter for, from the microscope to prevent the light of the microscope, which is really strong, to polymerize uh, the, the cement or whatever uh, composite I'm using uh, before I finish working with it, okay? Because, as I said, uh, the light of the microscope is too strong. Anything, that, anything which is uh, photosens photosensitive, which is sensible to, to the light, uh, if it goes on to the light of the microscope, it will immediately polymerize. So I need this yellow filter. So, but you can see even with the filter that the cement is very opaque. Okay, so I'm going to remove the gross excess and then I'm going to do a spot cure. Okay, just a little bit of cure, just a, a, the tip of that velo uh, point, I'm going to put in the middle of the veneer just to fix it onto the tooth, okay? Just a little spot, bling, one, two seconds, that's it. And now, oops, sorry. And now, where I was here. And now with some mylar stripes, I'm going to pass them through the proximal areas to remove the excesses on those areas. I could use a dental floss, but I prefer first to use the mylar stripes, like this one here. So I pass through the interproximal area, always from buccal to lingual, in one movement, 
from buckle to lingual, from buckle to lingual. Now I remove the filter and then the light of the microscope will start polymerizing the cement. And then I can remove that as it is slowly polymerizing with the light of, not too slowly, but it is polymerizing slowly than with the, with the, the, with the light cure device, okay? It's still slower, but now I can, with a very thin spatula, remove the excess, especially on those cervical areas, so that afterwards I won't need to use a burr over there, okay? And now, to finalize, I fully polymerize everything. And this is the result that we achieve. This is immediately after finishing the cementation, okay? You can see that the neighboring teeth are dehydrated, a little bit lighter, but that's normal, okay? And this is after a few weeks, few days. So you can see that uh, it's pretty nice, okay? I think we got a good result, but if I had made some mistake here or whatever, if after polymerization, removing uh, the rubber dam and everything, and then I look, mm, it's not too good. It's either too bright or too dark, then I would, I would need to start doing it all over again. So this is the problem about doing it with ceramics instead of doing with composites. Because when, with composites, if you need, you can do some adjustments, okay? You can do a, a small repairs, you can change the color, you can change the hue, you can create some, uh, some characterizations, you can enhance some details, but nevertheless, you can get it also a good result with the ceramics, okay? But my personal preference, I think you can realize that by now, is when you're treating one dark tooth, I prefer to do it with composites. But nevertheless, you can do it also with ceramics. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.